Good morning year two and welcome to Tuesday's English lesson. Today we are going to be learning how to write a character description or grammar. So to be successful today we need to be able to use adjectives and expanded noun phrases, use similes, use powerful verbs and adverbs to describe a character's actions, use commas in lists when describing and also use apostrophe for possession. Now you've also got a checklist for today, so when you're writing, make sure you look back at your checklist to make sure you've used all the features that are listed. Let's get into the starter and learn how to use apostrophes for possession. Kim borrows Sal's umbrella. Kim borrows Sal's umbrella. In this sentence, the word Sal's has an apostrophe. The apostrophe is a punctuation mark. We use it to show something belongs to a person or a thing. Here, it tells us that the umbrella belongs to Sal. When something belongs to a person or a thing, you add an apostrophe and an S. It's Sal's umbrella. Let's look for some more examples where apostrophes show that something belongs to someone. The girl's hat is white. The boy's dad spins him around. The girl's dog is playful. Can you think of some words like this? My friend's name is Joanna. My dog's name is Poopa. This is my friend's jumper. Chapter 1, Grandma. I'm going shopping in the village, George's mother said to George on Saturday morning. So be a good boy and don't get up to mischief. This was a silly thing to say to a small boy at any time. It immediately made him wonder what sort of mischief he might get up to. And don't forget to give Grandma her medicine at 11 o'clock, her mother said. Then out she went, closing the back door behind her. Grandma, who was dozing in her chair by the window, opened one wicked little eye and said, Now you heard what your mother said, George. Don't forget my medicine. No, Grandma, George said, and just try to behave yourself for once while she's away. Yes, Grandma, George said. George was bored to tears. He didn't have a brother or a sister. His father was a farmer and the farm they lived in was miles away from anywhere, so there were never any children to play with. He was tired of staring at pigs and hens and cows and sheep all day. He was especially tired of having to live in the same house as that grisly old granny of a grandma. Looking after her all by himself was hardly the most exciting way to spend a Saturday morning. You can make me a mask of tea for a start, grandma said to George. That'll keep you out of mischief for a few minutes. Yes, Grandma, George said. George couldn't help disliking Grandma. She was a selfish, grumpy old woman. She had pale brown teeth and a small puckered up mouth like a dog's bottom. How much sugar in your tea today, Grandma? George asked her. One spoon, she said, and no milk. Most grandmothers are lovely, kind, helpful old ladies, but not this one. She spent all day and every day sitting in her chair by the window. And she was always complaining, grousing, grouching, grumbling, griping about something or other. Never once, even on her best days, had she smiled at George and said, Well, how are you this morning, George? Or, why don't you and I have a game of snakes and ladders? Or, how was school today? She didn't seem to care about other people, only about herself. She was a miserable old grouch. 
George went into the kitchen and made Grandma a cup of tea with a tea bag. He put one spoon of sugar in it and no milk. He stirred the sugar well and carried the cup into the living room. Grandma sipped the tea. It's not sweet enough, she said. Put more sugar in. George took the cup back into the kitchen and added another spoonful of sugar. He stirred it again and carried it carefully into Grandma. Where's the saucer, she said. I won't have a cup without a saucer. George fetched her a saucer. And what about a teaspoon, if you please? I've stirred it for you, Grandma. I stirred it well. I'll stir my own tea, thank you very much, she said. Fetch me a teaspoon. George fetched her a teaspoon. When George's mother or father were here home, Grandma never ordered George about like this. It was only when she had him on her own that the that she began treating him badly. You know what's the matter with you? The old woman said, staring at George over the rim of her teacup with those bright, wicked little eyes. You're growing too fast. Boys who grow too fast become stupid and lazy. But I can't help it if I'm growing fast, Grandma, George said. Of course you can, she snapped. Growing's a nasty, childish habit. But we have to grow, Grandma. If we didn't grow, we'd never be grown-ups. Rubbish, boy, rubbish, she said. Look at me. Am I growing? Certainly not. But you did once, Grandma. Only very little, the old woman answered. I gave up growing when I was extremely small, along with all the other nasty, childish habits, like laziness and disobedience and greed and sloppiness and untidiness and stupidity. You haven't given up any of those things, have you? I'm still only little, a little boy, Grandma. You're eight years old, she snorted. That's old enough to know better. If you don't stop growing soon, it'll be too late. Too late for what, Grandma? It's ridiculous, she went on. You're nearly as tall as me already. George took a good look at Grandma. She certainly was a very tiny person. Her legs were so short she had to have a footstool to put her feet on and her head only came up halfway up the back of the armchair. Daddy said it's fine for a man to be tall, George said. Don't listen to your daddy, Grandma said. Listen to me. But how do I stop myself growing, George asked her. Eat less chocolate, Grandma said. Does chocolate make you grow? It makes you grow the wrong way, she snapped. Up, instead of down. Grandma sipped some tea but never took her eyes from the little boy who stood before her. Never grow up, she said. Always down. Yes, Grandma. And stop eating chocolate. Eat cabbage instead. Cabbage? Oh no, I don't like cabbage, George said. It's not what you like or what you don't like, Grandma snapped. It's what's good for you that counts. From now on, you must eat cabbage three times a day. Mountains of cabbage. And if it's got caterpillars in it, so much the better. Ouch, George said. Caterpillars give you brains, the old woman said. Mummy washes them down the sink, George said. Mummy's as stupid as you are, Grandma said. Cabbage doesn't taste of anything without a few boiled caterpillars in it. Slugs, too. Not slugs, George cried out. I couldn't eat slugs. Whenever I see a live slug on a piece of lettuce, Grandma said, I gobble it up quick before it crawls away. Delicious! She squeezed her lips together tight so that her mouth became a tiny wrinkled hole. Delicious, she said again. Worms and slugs and beetly bugs. You don't know what's good for you. You're joking, Grandma. I never joke, she said. Beetles are perhaps best of all. They go crunch. Grandma, that's beastly. Come closer to me, little boy, she said, beckoning to him with a horny finger. Come closer to me and I will tell you secrets. George didn't move. Grandma didn't move either. I know a great many secrets, she said, and suddenly she smiled. It was a thin, icy smile, the kind of snake might make look just before it bites you. Come over here to Grandma and she'll whisper secrets to you. George took a step backwards, edging closer to the door. You mustn't be frightened of your old Grandma, she said, smiling that icy smile. George took another step backwards. Some of us, she said, and all at once she was leaning forward in her chair and whispering in a throaty sort of voice George had never heard her use before. Some of us, she said, have magic powers that can twist the creatures of this earth into wondrous shapes. A ting of electricity flashed down the length of George's spine. He began to feel frightened. 
Some of us, the old woman went on, have fire on our tongues and sparks in our bellies and wizardry in the tips of our fingers. Some of us know secrets that would make your hair stand straight up on end and your eyes pop out of their sockets. George wanted to run away, but his feet seemed stuck to the floor. We know how to make your nails drop off and teeth grow out of your fingers instead. George began to tremble. It was her face that frightened him the most. The frosty smile, the brilliant unblinking eyes. We know how to have you wake up in the middle of the, middle of the night with a long tail coming out from behind you. Grandma, he cried, stop. We know secrets, my dear, about dark places where dark things live and squirm and slither all over each other. George made a dive for the door. It doesn't matter how far you run, he heard her saying. You won't ever get away. So now we have collected all of our phrases and our descriptive words. We can now write our descriptive sentences. Let's start with... Grandma is a selfish, bossy, old woman. The capital G for Grandma. Grandma is a selfish, comma, bossy, old woman. full stop. So here are my expanded noun with a comma in as well. Okay, let's think about her mouth. How was that described? Yes, her mouth is small and puckered like a dog's bottom. Her mouth is small and Puckered like a dog's dog's apostrophe between the G and the S bottom full stop. So there I've got my apostrophe for possession, and I've also got a simile like a dog's bottom. Okay, let's move on to her teeth. How are they described? Yes, pale brown teeth. So, she has a mouth full of pale brown teeth, let's use a simile and a conjunction, that look like toffee. So she has a mouth full of pale brown teeth, there's my expanded noun, that look like toffee. Let's go look at our um, check this we start. So yes, I've got adjectives expanded nouns. Yes, I've got a simile. No, I don't have any verbs or adverbs. I've got commas and I've got an apostrophe. So let's do verbs and adverbs. So let's think about her tea. She slurps her hot tea. Oh, let's edit this, she slurps her milky comma hot tea like a mm, like a vacuum cleaner exclamation mark slurps is a verb milky hot tea like a vacuum cleaner. Oh, I need to have an adverb, don't I? She slurps her milky hot tea slowly. Like a vacuum cleaner. 
brilliant. So your job today is to use the word bank that we made together or your one from yesterday and I'd like you to write a fantastic descriptive piece of writing all about grandma using your checklist to help you. Good luck, see you later.